Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it, hope you're having a great day. I am in Illuminar 4 today, and I thought I would uh, answer a few questions I've gotten about the sky replacement filter, as well as show you kind of a, a quick example um, of it in action on a photo that I'll edit live. So let me hop into it. Here's a photo, and I would not replace this guy in this one. This is just an example, but one of the questions I get, this will be point number one, is, hey, Jim, will this work with just JPEGs, or will it also work with RAW files? Um, I believe that answer, or excuse me, that question comes up because you'll often see me editing my photos here on these videos, um, and these photos are generally JPEGs. I generally use them because they're smaller files and therefore a little bit quicker to respond because I'm recording things live. In my real life, if you will, non-YouTube life, um, I shoot raw and I edit raw photos. So here's an example. This is a raw file. If you look here, you can see it says raw. It's a .arw file, which is the Sony raw file format. Um, I'll go ahead and I'm just gonna pick a sky. It doesn't matter what it is. And boom, it's on there. And that's a raw file. So yes, it works regardless of whether it's a raw file or a JPEG. And I'm sure all the other file formats are supported as well. That's point number one. Okay, second question I've gotten a lot is, does it work with skies that aren't just clear and plain and blue? Um, I think a lot of the examples, that's the kind of sky that's being replaced because it's a boring sky, right? It's just a blue sky, not a cloud anywhere. Uh, great day for a picnic, terrible sky for photography, right? So um, yes, the answer is it will replace those skies. You saw that on the last photo where there were some clouds in the sky. But here's an image, and this one's much cloudier, and I can come in here and say sky selection, and I have no idea what skies I'm picking. I'm just randomly doing that. Boom, you can see it puts one in there. So I pick that dramatic sky. I'll get this bright blue sky, number four. You can see it picks it and puts it in, and it looks great, and that is even replacing a sky that looked great normally. Uh, let me show you the original sky. There's the original. Great sky, lots of stuff. I would not change this sky, but I wanted to let you know it doesn't have to be a clear, cloudless blue sky to be replaced. It can be something with a lot going on, such as this one. Okay, another common question is, hey, what if it's a really uneven horizon? Um, and if the last two photos were not any indication, then maybe this one will help. Um, uneven horizon is totally fine. It doesn't matter. So um, I think some people were, you know, looked at some of the example photos and said, hey, guess what? It's kind of a flat horizon. This is definitely not a flat horizon. I can come in here with dramatic sky one, and it puts it on there, right? Let me go get a sunset, uh, sunset one, and it sticks it on there. So again, I'm not saying that the skies I'm choosing are the ones that you should choose or that they look good on these photos. I'm just showing that even with that kind of horizon, you're still getting a great looking uh, blend where the sky is coming in around these sort of um, very uneven structures. So that was question number three. Okay, and another question, which is actually really similar to the uneven horizon question, and that is, what if it's a really uh, disjointed sort of thing? In other words, uh, it's not just an uneven horizon, but the sky's in different areas. Now, I've already shown a couple of videos that probably illustrate this, but this photo ought to help. So you can see this bridge, and I've kind of shot down the bridge. You can see the sky peeking through different parts. I'm just gonna pick this blue sky six, and boom, you can see it go in. Um, and actually, that sky looks kind of good there. Um, it looks better than the original sky uh, by far. So, and I like cloudy skies. Uh, but anyway, that is, uh, that is a great blend. I mean, as you can see, right, it's all through these things. Uh, these clouds go around that. It's over these buildings, these clouds, the trees. I mean, honestly, I'm very impressed. Now, I'm gonna show you a workflow here in a second, but I do have to say, this this filter is not perfect. Um, there, I've found some images, and I'll probably do a video where I show some of the situations where I've come across challenges with it, but um, it's not perfect every single time. Now, it's a hell of a lot more accurate and perfect than I would ever be trying to replace skies on my own in Illuminar using any of the various methods I've done in the past. Um, and it's certainly a whole lot less tedious. Now, I think when you first get it, you're uh, your thinking is going to be, I'm going to put a new sky in everything, right? You know, everybody gets a prize or whatever, uh, like some Oprah show. But, um, you know, I think you're probably going to find over time, number one, you're going to settle down with the excitement about it, which is, it, I'm still excited. And I've had this for, you know, several weeks. Um, but, you know, you're also going to start to realize, okay, I probably need to replace that sky or, or whatever. But my point is just that 
Um, 95% of the time, it's doing an incredibly accurate, really amazing job. There's 5% of the time where I'm finding, okay, there's a little bit of an issue here or a little bit of an issue there. Some things you can fix. Sometimes I figure out, I'm like, I, I don't really think I can fix it. And you know what? That's okay because 5% um, of the time not being able to replace this guy is a whole lot better than what it was like beforehand. So I'm not trying to cast any, you know, um, negative light on this filter. I think it's amazing. It's literally mind blowing. I mean, you can see in the uh, photos that I've illustrated already. Uh, but there's a few instances here and there where I've come across where I'm like, all right, it's not hitting it just right and you can't really fix that or something. So um, keep in mind, however, I'm in beta. Um, the product's in beta. Everything that I'm doing and showing you, it's still in beta. So I don't really know how the final product is gonna work and things may change. And having said that, let me show you one more photo. Okay, I picked this photo, um, which I gotta be honest, like I took this years ago and I couldn't find a way to make it interesting other than to make it a monochrome. Um, with the sky replacement filter, I just come in here and I gotta look at my notes. I take dramatic sky four, nope, sorry, dramatic sunset four. Um, and you put that on there and wow, it's already better looking. And if you look at the tree, I mean, it's coming around and between uh, even some of those finer points of the branches, right? So, um, I mean, I think that looks really good overall. I'm very impressed for an automatic. I see a couple little spots and these are some of the situations you may come across. Um, you can work to fix some of those. I've got to look at my notes here. Um, if you go into advanced settings, there's closed gaps. And sometimes when I move that up, um, you'll see that some of those things disappear. And in fact, that looks better already. Um, and this sky local, I will often adjust that as well. So something like that. And you know, I think that that's looking a bit better. I might pull that back a little bit. You can see how that's impacting these clouds down there. But I actually think I liked it higher. Yeah, something like that. Um, let me zoom back out. but. I mean, I think already we've got a much better looking photo and that's using a couple of these advanced settings and I'll get into this in more detail in future videos. But I mean, I went from that to that in literally no time at all. That's a what I would consider a complicated sky replacement because not only do you have the horizon, which is not level, but you have a tree and you gotta get the sky behind it. And again, I'm floored. Does it work 100% of the time, 100% accurately? No, as I said, it doesn't. It's not perfect. Nothing is perfect, but it's it's so much closer to perfect than I've ever been before um, in all the photo editing I've done over the last 10 or 12 years. So I'm pretty excited about it. Let me get a couple of more filters because this is where I would go in and start to make some adjustments to the photo. I'm gonna pop over here to Pro and get Adjustable Gradient. I'm gonna say Set Orientation, and I'm gonna sh uh, kind of shove this a little bit lower, closer to that horizon line, and shrink that a little bit as well. And let's see, maybe something about, I'm gonna come a little bit lower, about like that. Say done, if I can hit the done button. And I'm gonna go to bottom and I'm gonna increase the exposure. I gotta look at my notes. So, you know, I'm doing a little bit of workflow here, which I'm trying to avoid before launch simply because things may change a little bit. I'm gonna take the warmth down a little bit and the vibrance up a little bit. Uh, something about like that. I think the photo's looking better. I mean, there's before and after. It's really turning into a beautiful photo. Oh, another question I get is about skies. You can use your own skies. All of these examples have been skies that are included in Luminar, but Luminar, um, it comes with 20 or so, but you can add your own sky files. So I highly recommend you get out and start taking photos of skies if you haven't already. I've been doing it for years simply because I like skies, really with no intent to ever use them, but now I have a good way to use them. So. Um, I will next go to Color Enhancer. So I'm gonna close that, go to Color Enhancer. I'm gonna click on Advanced, and that's where my favorite filter is, Color Balance. And I'm gonna go into Highlights, and I'm gonna come over here to about a 20 on the highlights uh, towards the red. Uh, and then I'm gonna close that, and I'm gonna pop down here to Split Toning, and I'm gonna go into the uh, Hue and Saturation for the highlights. I'm gonna go about 26 and a saturation of about 56, something like that. There we go, that's about where I was. Uh, and that's it, what I did is I took a middle of the day, boring, uh, what would have been a monochrome photo for myself, 
and with the new sky and some color adjustments in split toning and color balance, which is part of the new color enhancer, it's sort of a combined filter. You got brilliance and warmth, color contrast, split color warmth, and you got color balance hiding down there in the advanced settings tab. Um, that and some split toning um, and the adjustable gradient, which you know from the previous version of Luminar. And I got a gorgeous looking photo, honestly. And if I wasn't sitting here yapping, uh, that would only take me a few minutes. And the sky replacement itself, which is, you know, arguably the hardest part of the edit, that, uh, that took, um, I don't know, it was two or three clicks. So what, five seconds, three seconds? I'm not sure. The point is um, this AI stuff is really powerful, really lovely. I'm having a great time with it. I was able to take a kind of photo that's, you know, it's not a throwaway photo. I like the photo. or It's taken from Scotland many years ago, like six or seven years ago. Um, but I turned it into something that just fun to make. This was easy. This was quick. And this is the power of Luminar 4 and the Sky Replacement Filter, which is AI-based and amazing. I'll be back more. Uh, excuse me. I'll be back soon with more videos talking about this, the portrait filter, AI structure, and some other things as well. And I don't want to get too much into the workflow. As I said, I showed you a couple of filters here simply because I wanted to edit this photo and show you what I would do to it in addition to replacing a sky. Um, but I'll, I'll be sharing a lot of workflow and talking a lot about how filters are different and how they're arranged and all that um, at launch and after launch. So for now, just keep in mind we're in beta, so things may change. And in fact, they will change. I've already heard of a couple things that are going to change. So um, we'll, uh, we'll just stop there. Um, but that's it, my friends. Wanted to give you some examples, wanted to answer some questions, and wanted to show you a quick workflow of taking something that was kind of ho hum, blah, you know, I think a cool scene because I like this kind of stuff, kind of minimalism with that tree hanging out looking like a sentinel, like standing guard, and turning it into something that's a bit more um, visually interesting. Let's leave it at that. Um, that's it, my friends. I do appreciate you watching. Love for you to like, share, subscribe, that sort of things. And if you haven't yet pre-ordered Luminar 4, you can do that at the link below. That is an affiliate link. So I make a small commission if you buy off of that link. And uh, if you do, I really appreciate it. And if you don't, I appreciate you coming by and watching. Anyway, I hope the video is helpful. And I'll see you soon, my friends. Have a great day. Take care and adios.